on MTN, a woman's mission to give back. After hitting what she calls rock bottom, she's now trying to help others with a simple gift in hopes they don't go through the same struggles. Plus the latest on yesterday's tragic Georgia school shooting. Why authorities cleared the suspected teenage shooter after questioning him about a shooting threat just last year. And costly candidates, we compare all of the cost-saving promises former President Trump and Vice President Harris are making, and if it's realistic. The 430 News starts right now. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Thursday. I'm Andrea Lutz. September is National Recovery Month, and one Billings woman is celebrating more than a thousand days of being sober in a unique way. She started collecting luggage, something most take for granted, but something those in foster care might treasure. Our Charlie Kleps explains. It's something most of us own, a simple duffel bag or backpack that can easily hold and transport our belongings. But many foster children aren't so lucky, and when they move, their belongings are forced into trash bags instead. Well, one Billings woman is trying to change that, and her reason why is extremely powerful. Rock bottom is scary. It's dark. It's cold. Overcoming addiction isn't easy. When I hit rock bottom, I had just lost my best friend to an overdose. For Zoe Lynn Hilario, it took the death of a friend, CPS taking her son, and the loss of her home to truly hit rock bottom. I reached a point in my addiction where it was live or die. You know what I mean? And at the end, when I started to hit rock bottom and I was getting deeper into rock bottom, I learned that I no longer wanted to die. That powerful realization brought her here to the Yellowstone County Treatment Court in search of the road to recovery. So for me, it was about looking at myself and looking at where things went wrong for me. Today, Hilario is 1,086 days sober. She started college classes and her son has been returned to her custody. It's bittersweet, I think, for me to look back at who I was when I walked into the treatment court and to see the person that stares back at me in the mirror today. And Hilario isn't done improving yet. She's holding a luggage drive for foster kids, just like she once was, hoping to make a difference. It blew up pretty much overnight, I think. I didn't think I was going to get anywhere near as many things as I've gotten. I'm incredibly proud of Zoe Lynn. Honestly, she blows me away every day. Treatment court coordinator Sophia Jackson is pleasantly surprised as well, though her joy comes from watching Hilario's progress. She's done so much with her mental health and her addiction and her even with her parenting. While her collection is already impressive, Hilario can always use more. There's a drop-off day on September 21st at Growing Together on Grand Avenue. She plans to distribute everything to Tumbleweed and CPS on October 15th. She just continues to grow. It's a success story the treatment court dreams of. I love seeing this version of Zoe Lynn that just is not afraid to take on challenges, to have setbacks. All of these things are really just what we want for anybody in our community. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. A 14-year-old accused of killing two teachers and two students in a mass shooting at a Georgia high school is facing four counts of felony murder. Authorities say Colt Gray is expected to be tried as an adult and will make his first court appearance tomorrow morning. Gray was in his second day at Appalachie High School in Winder, Georgia, when he opened fire with an AR-15 style rifle killing four and hospitalizing nine others. Gray and his father were questioned back in May of 2023 after reports surfaced of an online school shooting threat on a chat platform. Investigators cleared both, saying they couldn't prove the account belonged to either. This is the 45th school shooting in 2024. It's always difficult to talk to your loved ones, especially children in the wake of a school shooting. An added wrinkle to this is the timing here as many children are just beginning to go back to school. After a school shooting, it's common for children of any age to have feelings of fear or worry for their safety. It can also re-trigger feelings of grief. We've spoken many times about this with clinical psychologist and trauma expert, Dr. Robin Gerwich. She says the timing of this school shooting at the start of the year could make things harder on parents and teens especially. So at the beginning of the school year, when I'm thinking this is going to be the good year, and it starts out with a horrific tragedy, then the question becomes, are all my hopes for what the school year could bring or nothing. And we have to reinforce that there's still some positives that we can find in the school year they have ahead. 
and what is their school doing to keep them as safe as possible. Experts say staying calm, having a little plan of what to say, but being ready and leaving space to listen is key, starting with just stating the fact there was a shooting at a school today. What have you heard? can be a strong start. Be up to date if your child does have a question, and it's crucial not to shut down any emotions and tears if they come up. Much of the conversation should revolve around safety. What we can say is, I truly believe that your school or our community, our family is doing everything it can to keep you safe. And I would never send you somewhere that I didn't believe that you would be okay. And one last tip, always make sure you're taking care of your own mental health as well. Lindsay Thee, Scripps News, Los Angeles. Sunshine all over the place today. In fact, even the smoke backed off a little bit for much of the state. Still had some air quality issues in the western portion of Montana. But as we get into the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Conditions are remaining above seasonal averages. We'll continue to look at a lot of those warm and dry conditions into the early part of next week as well. And by the time we start getting in towards the the tight labor market might be starting to ease. That's according to the Montana Department of Labor and Industry. That's one insight from a newly released Labor Day report. The labor force reached a record 580,000 people at 2024, halfway through in the year. Montana ranking fourth in the nation for people migrating into the state since 2020. And Montana also ranked eighth in the nation for fastest employment growth. But the report says there's still two job openings for every unemployed person in the state. The state's aging population is a factor. People are leaving the workforce and health care adding the most jobs in the state, while trades and construction have the highest need for workers. MDT has 1,200 bridges that need to be fixed. The average age of schools just here in Helena is over 60 years. And we have wastewater and water systems such as the St. Mary Diversion Dam that are in crisis mode. So there's plenty of work to do. The report also says the average wage earned by a Montana worker grew to $57,000 in 2023. And the 5% year-over-year wage growth, growth puts Montana second in the nation for wage growth since 2020. In a surprising turn of events, Hunter Biden has officially pled guilty to charges in his federal tax case. Biden said under oath in a Los Angeles federal courtroom that nobody made him any promises to convince him to plead guilty. He's charged with nine counts, including three felonies for his failure to pay at least $1.4 million in federal taxes between 2016 and 2019. The president's son eventually paid $2 million in back taxes and penalties following a years-long struggle with drug addiction and alcoholism. Sentencing is scheduled for December 16th after November's presidential election, and the prosecution did not object to the date which was proposed by the judge. Between tax cuts for seniors and no taxes on tips, not to mention child tax credit changes, presidential promises are starting to add up. Joe St. George looks at the impact of increased debt in our country and which candidate experts say is calling for more. Whichever candidate wins in November will have to work with lawmakers under these columns to pass their campaign promises into law. There's only one issue for the candidates. Economic ideas can be expensive. You don't usually learn a lot at a bus stop. That's not the case at this one, a few blocks from the U.S. Capitol. A reminder of how much debt our country is in, 35 trillion and growing. A number so high that if you divided it by every American, we would all owe over $104,000. We are going to not charge taxes on tips. We will continue our fight for working families of America. On the campaign trail, you don't hear much about the debt, but you do hear plenty of ideas from the candidates regarding how to help your pocketbook. Take, for instance, the idea to have no taxes on tips for service workers. Former President Trump has endorsed the idea. Vice President Harris has, too. The cost? According to the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget, the price tag will be $150 to $250 billion over five years. What about increasing the child tax credit? In an interview recently, Republican vice presidential nominee J.D. Vance suggested 
suggested increasing it from two to five thousand dollars per child. Vice President Harris has backed increasing it too, and even proposed a new six thousand dollar newborn tax credit. The cost anywhere between one to three trillion over ten years, depending on income limits and qualifications. There are other ideas too. Trump has called for no taxes on Social Security benefits, potentially costing a hundred billion dollars a year. Harris has called for a twenty-five thousand dollar down payment assistance program to help home buyers, something that could cost between twenty-five and thirty-five billion annually. So essentially telling everybody what they want to hear. Kent Smetters is with the Wharton School of Business and analyzes how much the candidate's campaign promises might cost taxpayers. There's no question that Trump is calling for more debt over the next decade than Harris, so over twice as much. Smetters says that's because Trump has expressed interest in lowering the current corporate tax rate, which may create more economic activity, but would also likely create more debt. Harris, meanwhile, has called for higher corporate taxes, which would create revenue. If you're wondering why the debt matters, Smetters says future generations could see drastic spending cuts or higher inflation. The burden that we're placed on future generations, somebody has to pay it. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. Still to come on the MTN 430 News, plans released for a new Southside Rec Center. This one's smaller and cheaper and possibly not needed for the ballot. We'll explain, and Ed is back with a look at that warm weekend coming up.